Aloha and welcome to Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Much More on Medicine is an opportunity to learn about all aspects of healthcare. I talk with guests about medical and alternative care treatment, insurance, medication, surgery, rehabilitation, prevention, and much more. Joining me in the studio is Runa Rosa to talk about healthy holiday airline travel. Will you be flying during this holiday season? If you are, you'll be doing so during a tremendously busy time. The TSA estimates that 26.8 million passengers are expected to fly nationwide between November 22nd and December 2nd this year. According to the Senior Vice President of American Airlines, Sharon Pinkerton, the Sunday after Thanksgiving will likely be the single busiest day ever for the U.S. airline industry, with about 3.1 million passengers traveling. If you are one of these passengers, you will appreciate today's discussion about staying healthy while traveling. Runa Rosa is a licensed physical therapist, earned her MBA with a focus in healthcare, and has traveled to 70 countries worldwide. I've done extensive traveling myself to over 32 countries, and so Runa and I will share with you what we've learned about staying healthy while traveling. Runa, welcome. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's great to have you here to talk about one of our favorite things, and that is foreign travel and, inter and actually traveling in the U.S. Let's call it an, an obsession, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. <laughs> and actually, Runa and I have traveled to, what countries have we been to together? Turkey. Uh, correct. Brazil. And Czech Republic. Oh, that's right. And, and Germany. Germany. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, out of the 70 countries that you've traveled to, what one stands in your mind as one of the most exciting places that you've gone? You know, it's a tough question, but I really did enjoy Morocco. Oh, mm -hmm. and that's one of my favorites as well. Okay. And I have to say that it's kind of exciting for you to be here today because you just got back from New Zealand, right? Yes. Okay, so let's get into it and um, let our guests know what we do to stay healthy. So mm -hmm. I understand that there's a few things that you do before you go on a trip to make sure it's a successful trip. Yeah, I think number one, when you pick your destination, you should probably check to see, you know, if there's any trip advisories for that country. So the State Department has a great website that you can check to see if there's any unrest in the country. I almost made a mistake one time booking a flight to Venezuela. And that would have been a big mistake. Exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, actually, and you should check about whether you need a visa, correct? You know, that's a very good thought. Yes. <laughs> I was at the airport in Honolulu just two weeks ago. and I didn't realize I needed a visa for New Zealand. Yeah, and but, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't realize I needed a, a visa for Turkey. But when I got there, then you could buy it. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is to check this um, the, is it the CDC website? Yes, the Centers for Disease Control um, has a great website, so you can check if you need any vaccinations. I've done a lot of traveling to kind of developing countries in Africa and Asia, so you do have to check to see, you know, what kind of diseases are prevalent there that we may not be, you know, vaccinated for, such as yellow fever, malaria. So it's important to check ahead you may have to start taking um, pills before your trip and, and even some shots you have to take a couple of doses of six months apart. So you have to be prepared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get the inclination that you're going to go to Africa, you might want to check into that, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes. I know I had vaccinations way back when to go to Morocco, and, but I remember going to a travel doctor. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little better. We can just look on the internet, look on the CDC website, right? That's right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's another thing that I do right before I go on a trip, okay. and that is to get a lot of sleep. Okay. And the way I travel is I like to fly red eyes. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, if I'm going to Europe, it can be 16 hours in the air from Honolulu. If I go to um, South America, it can be 25 hours in the air. It can be a really long day of flying yes. or two days, right? Mm -hmm. So um, 
what do you do any anything else special in advance of going on a trip? You know, I like to pack light and be fast. Okay. So I don't do any special pillows or, you know, any aids to sleep. I just, you know, take it as it is and I, I do my, my thing on the airplane and be comfortable with a rotation of eating, sleeping, and watching movies. Okay. And mm -hmm. so let's look at the backpack um, okay. uh, picture. Okay. So is this how you travel? That is how I travel. That's my Osprey backpack. And it's a phenomenal pack. You can actually tuck in the straps. So it can be a regular bag that you can carry. It is carry-on size, so you don't have to worry about checking a bag ever. You can be, like I said, light and, light and fast. Okay. And those cubes are wonderful. You know, they help you stay organized. I just discovered those a couple of years ago. Sure. Mm. I, I use the cubes in my packing, but I pack a little differently than you. And I have a particular reason, so let me explain. I use a 20-inch wheelie and a backpack. And I check in the 20-inch wheelie, and I use, uh, I actually use a 511 backpack. And okay. um, that, because I can lift it up into the overhead bin, and I think people that have back problems, mm -hmm. I think they need to make sure that they can lift up their bag. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of times, if you're uh, flying and traveling internationally, mm -hmm. you're going to be using trains. And to be able to get in and off of trains, having a backpack is fantastic. It is. Mm -hmm. And also being able to do so. I can do it with a 20-inch bag and a backpack. It's not a problem. But if I had a mm -hmm. larger suitcase, that would be a lot more difficult. Right. And I find the airlines now are becoming more strict with the size of the carry on so luckily, this is the perfect size. And I've actually been challenged once at an airport in Paris. He said, well, oh, you have to check that bag. And I said, oh, no, show me where the container is. I'll fit it in there. So he walked me to it. I stuck it in there. And he's, he was a little taken aback. And he said, well, it's over the, the weight limit. I said, oh, no, where's your scale? <laughs> and I, I caught it. It was a 10 kilogram limit. And I believe I had a 9.9. .9. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. So. Now, and that goes with experience, and yes. you know what to pull out of there. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at the water bottle. So this is my water bottle that I tend to bring. It's not a huge bottle. Uh, that's a little Travelocity gnome with it. Um, and the story I wanted to point out with the water bottle is I always bring the water bottle on board with me, and that carabiner that's attached, that I can actually hook to the seat pocket mm -hmm. so that I have water available at any time during the flight and I don't necessarily have to bother a flight attendant. I can simply sleep and not have mm -hmm. to have the tray down for water. But right. The reason why I wanted to point this out now is that after you, you know, pack and get ready for your trip, you have to go through TSA. Okay. Yes. And now you have pre-check as well, right? I do. And mm -hmm. global entry? Yes, I okay. just received the global entry. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are must-dos if you yes. travel a lot. So one time when I was in Munich uh, and I forgot to empty out that water bottle, the TSA officer made me drink the contents of the water bottle, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason I bring this up is I want to make sure people understand that they need to empty their water bottles. They can't count on um, you know, not having that happen. Okay. And so um, another thing I'd like to have you bring up is the picture regarding the uh, TSA um, plastic bag with toiletries in it. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's um, the a court bag. And I actually have something I've bought from a drugstore or something to put some things in. Do you also carry something like this? I do, yes, a very similar bag. Mm -hmm, okay, that I pack. okay. And so once you get on the plane, now my number one thing is to get as much sleep as possible. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't do that for many years. I would like, oh, get excited. I could read or watch movies or whatever. And then I discovered that my experience once I get to the country is so much better if I'm well rested. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you try to sleep when you're on the plane? I do try to sleep, yes. Um, but I also try, if I'm not tired, to get up every hour and do a little walk up and down the aisle. 
Okay. Do you and, do the same? Um, I do. I, I do try to move, okay, because I know that there's a risk of blood clots mm. if you stay in, the, in your seat and you're, like, fixed in your seat. And one thing that I do is I wear compression socks a lot of times when mm -hmm. I travel for long distances. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at wearing them all the time, but I try to do that because I know that's good. Have you had any experiences where you've actually exercised on the plane or <laughs> noticed anyone doing well, that? I have a funny story. I took a long flight from Lisbon, Portugal to Miami, and there was a young couple sitting beside me. And I couldn't believe my eyes when shortly after takeoff, they got up and were walking up to change into their athletic outfits. <laughs> and then a few minutes later, I noticed they were up by the bathrooms and they actually had dumbbells. <laughs> and this individual was doing squats and doing some bicep curls. You know, they were really going, going for it. They were pretty serious <laughs> um, traders. They, they okay. were, yes. Yeah, well, okay, and while we're talking about exercise, let's just move on to some other exercise topics. Okay. okay. Now, the most exercises I'm really going to do on a plane are maybe some, you know, subtle stretches right. or something, <laughs> and maybe some walking. But um, one thing that I do, and this is a high priority for me, okay. is that when, I, when I'm booking a hotel, I try to make sure that they have a swimming pool. Oh, mm -hmm. And I'm so interested in having a good swimming pool for swimming laps that I actually will find out what the temperature of the swimming pool is. Do you bring a thermometer with you? Um, no, but <laughs> I do have one. Okay. Um, so um, and sometimes I actually, if I have a lot of opportunity to bring stuff with me, I will actually bring a little tiny kickboard. And okay. now what kind of exercise do you do when you're Normally traveling? I go for a run. Okay. So my husband and I do like to just get out there in the streets and go for a nice, you know, five mile run. Of course, we're walking a lot on trips too, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll walk as many as 20,000 mm -hmm. um, steps uh, in a day. Right. Right. And so, do you have a good pair of shoes? Absolutely. We yeah. will talk about shoes when we come back from our break. Right. So, okay, we're taking a short break. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Runa Rosa about healthy holiday airline travel. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Polo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. We're back, we're live. I'm Catherine Knorr, and this is Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. And we're talking with Runa Rosa about healthy holiday airline travel. Before the break, Runa, we were talking mm -hmm. about shoes. And yes. let's pull up the shoe picture. Okay, so the top shoe is called an On the Cloud. Uh, the, the manufacturer is On, the type of shoe is the Cloud. It's a running shoe. And this is the shoe that I've found after a lot of experimenting that is a very comfortable shoe that can be used in all types of environment. You can walk for a long ways. And also, you can even get away with wearing it with dress pants at a conference. Um, and so it's a very, very uh, functional, versatile shoe. And the one below it, Rona, Rona is that's whose shoe you wear? That is, yeah. That's a Merrill uh, walking trail shoe. It's phenomenally comfortable. And so I found that's the shoe I go to for a lot of the European trips where you're walking a lot on cobblestone streets. 
You need the comfort, so they're a really nice shoe. Okay, so what I've experienced in travel is that um, because I live in Hawaii, my shoes fall apart. So I've had situations where I've brought a shoe that was a very important shoe for the trip, mm -hmm. and it's fallen apart on my trip, and I've spent the whole trip trying to find <laughs> a replacement shoe. So because of that, I've always tried to bring two pairs of shoes that I could wear because of the possibility of one okay. that has a problem. But also, there's a really important thing that one should bring, and that is Band-Aids. I agree. Right? Yes. Okay. Do you bring bandages? I do. And I even bring Neosporin in case you have a blister that breaks open. A little Neosporin and a Band-Aid prevents any infection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the thing about that, and I had a recent experience in Greece where I actually had to go and buy Band-Aids at a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. and. And I looked everywhere there, and they didn't have a box of Band-Aids like you would buy in the U.S. So I yeah. asked the pharmacist. Yeah. It turned out they had to, like, I had to tell them how many I wanted, and he counted them out from a little <laughs> drawer. It was oh. uh, like a file cabinet. Mm -hmm. And so do you also bring any other medicine on a trip? I do, yes. Um, I usually bring Motrin. Okay. You know, for uh, ibuprofen, an okay. anti-inflammatory painkiller, and uh, Sudafed for congestion. Okay. And that's the brand name uh, you can see on the screen. Lopiramide is the name of that, that drug. And um, I'm sorry, that, that was Imodium. I take that back. Okay. And that is for? For Montezuma's Revenge? That's correct. Okay. Yes, we have to be careful with that. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and... When you travel, you know, there are so many possibilities of getting sick, and you may wish to get travel insurance. Um, and some countries, they're actually requiring it now. And mm. certainly you do a lot of backcountry traveling, so there are situations you may want it. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Mm. I've okay. never done it myself, but certainly there are reasons to do it. When you're doing a big trek, you want to make sure you're covered in case something happens. If you fall, you break break a leg. Oh, you know. and as a matter of fact, you know that I fractured my ankle when I was in Montreal. I was foolishly walking downstairs and taking pictures rather than paying mm. attention and actually fractured my ankle. And had I had travel insurance, right. I would have gotten treatment there, but I made my way back to the U.S. Okay. And, and have you been sick on a trip before? Yeah. You know, one time uh, my husband got a really bad uh, throat infection. We were traveling in Vietnam and doing a motorcycle tour, and he disregarded the advice to wear like a bandana around his, his mouth so he wouldn't inhale all the smoke and the exhaust. So unfortunately, he you know, became ill. And we were on a five-country trip. We were doing five countries in five weeks. So our next country was India, and this throat infection was really getting you know, more severe. So we did ask at the front desk of the hotel we stayed at, and they did have a doctor on call. So I'd, I'd highly recommend not to be uncomfortable. Ask at your hotel. They will very likely have an option for you to have a doctor come. And it was for a very minimal fee of 20 U.S. dollars, and he assessed us and even prescribed, uh, you know, an antibiotic for both of us to take. And that really saved us for, for the rest of our trip. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And okay, so let's move on to jet lag. How do you uh, prevent jet lag? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, to get the most sleep on the airplane is number one. And then when I get to the destination, I just get into their time zone. Forget about where I came from mm -hmm. and stay up until the normal bedtime there. And, uh, and exercise for me is key to get my body back on track. I do the same. Mm -hmm. I get on the, their time zone right away. Okay, so let's move on to one of these important things that you just mentioned, and, and that is getting sleep on the plane, mm -hmm. okay? So I want to talk about how I accomplish this, because okay. I'm not a sleeper like you. I know that you have said that you can just fall asleep on a plane. I'm often asleep before takeoff. Okay, well, I'm not that person. <laughs> I have to have all my accoutrement, okay? So uh, let's pull up the neck uh, pillow. Neck pillow picture. Okay, so this is what I'm using now. It's called a turtle, and it has a structure inside of it which um, allows you to kind of lean on it, and it um, and you can wrap this around your neck in the in how whatever position that you want it. 
The nice thing about this, and it's kind of weird, but you can actually have your mouth open, hang open and you can cover it with that scarf thing. And so it's not that embarrassing to sleep as a lot of people have their mouth hanging open. Nice. Um, and then let's pull up the, um, well, let me just say that with regard to the neck pillow, mm. you have to try different things. I've tried many different ones and this is the one I'm trying now. It's not my very favorite. My very, the one that I was using before is a very small one that just, goes around your neck and it's just a foam thing around just your neck and that mm. one's a very effective one. Okay. I don't like the bigger ones. Okay, okay let's pull up the um, lumbar back pillow. Okay, so this is the most important thing I travel with. If I only had to bring one thing, I would bring this. It's called a travel on neck and back pillow, but I use it as a lumbar pillow and it folds up very small and then it self inflates and you can put it where you feel comfortable um, on your lower back. And mm. this will make that horrible airline seat feel like first class. And it makes it easier to sleep. Fantastic. The other thing that I do is um, I like to elevate my feet a little bit because you know those little economy seats, uh, it's, they don't, they don't um, go back right. that much. Mm -hmm. And so I will actually put my uh, feet on like a backpack underneath okay. the seat. Mm -hmm. But let's pull up the blanket picture. The, yeah, okay, so th um, this is a Bucky um, travel blanket, and I found that this one is my favorite right now. I've tested a lot. It's a really nice uh, size. It's small enough to pack, and noise cancellation headphones are mm -hmm. fantastic, although if you don't have the room, you could bring some earplugs. Okay. And then in that picture shows um, slippers, and I wear the slippers. On the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of the new airplanes do have a adjustable neck. Piece. Oh, and do you use yes, that? Yes, I do, and it is helpful. Okay, it prevents the neck, you know, from sliding to one side or the other. Okay. And, and the other thing I have to admit I have an obsession with is flying on the new Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Oh, is that wonderful? Yeah. So I do try to get onto that airplane whenever I can. Okay. Because um, it has a lot of new, it has different lighting in it for better sleep. Oh. It has bigger windows. It has a higher humidity. So the, the effects of jet lag are reduced in that aircraft. Oh, really? And yeah. you know what? When we go to the Olympics in Tokyo, I'm actually flying on the Dreamliner when I go back. Perfect. Okay. I'll have so, to book that same flight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So when... There's a lot of germs in, on a plane, okay? Do you use hand sanitizer? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those people who wipes uh, uh, the tray and all around? I do not do that, do you? I don't, but I hear of people doing it. It's not a bad idea because they really don't clean the planes much. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about the blanket on the plane? I snuggle up with that blanket. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, so I don't use it because I know they don't wash them that often, but, um, but you know, I think that's a matter of choice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Okay. How about mm. drinking the water and ice on the plane? Yeah, I have no trouble with that. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I use it. I do okay. as well. How about alcohol? Do you drink uh, wine? Um, well, let me or... ask you. You can tell me first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do. You know, if the international flight and it's free, Wine or beer, I'm on it. Okay, you know? I, I do as well. Okay. If, but I only do it on the international flights. And the reason why is they give you a meal and with that, they'll just pour you some wine. That's sort of normal. And I have wine with my meal on a Perfect. normal basis. Yeah. However, if it's a matter of me getting sleep and that's my agenda mm -hmm. is getting sleep on the entire flight, I absolutely will not drink alcohol. Um, and that's because I also, uh, I do take Ambien when I fly, okay. and uh, that's a prescription sleep medication. However, I think people need to talk to their doctors about any type of sleep medication they take on a plane, Definitely. and they should probably test it before they get Definitely. on the plane. Yeah. I did want to mention one more thing. Um, traveling to a, a foreign country, if you can download the Google Translate application mm. on your phone, very helpful. Because I had an instance in Sicily where a friend of mine got ill, and I had to take him in, uh, in an ambulance to the hospital, and I had to uh, converse with the paramedics using Google Translate. 
So okay. it really worked out well. I was able to tell him his history and what, what medication he possibly could have taken to cause his reaction. Okay, yeah. so that was really helpful in terms of dealing with medication. Exactly. And yeah. another thing that I wanted to point out with uh, about medication is uh, they always say to bring their original medication bottles or prescription bottles. And I've done that, but I've also put medication in other containers as well. I've never had a problem with it. Although the one thing that I will not um, put in a different container is the Ambien because that's a controlled substance. Mm -hmm. And I feel uncomfortable taking a controlled substance outside of the medication bottle to another country. Mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would agree. I think that's a great idea. You know, okay. I've never taken you know, the bottles with me either. I put them in small plastic bags and I label them so that I'm aware of what. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think to kind of wrap this up, and we've talked about a lot of different subjects a, yeah. a little quickly, and, um, but I, I think the bottom line is I think it's a good idea to check those sites, uh, mm -hmm. CDC, uh, you know, you can register with uh, the State Department, you can check mm -hmm. the State Department sites, check with your doctor before you travel, consider getting travel insurance, mm -hmm. um, pack in a way that you feel that you can carry, that you can take charge of your items rather than something so heavy that you can't lift exactly. it. That mm -hmm. can cause back pain. And also to be as comfortable and as safe on the plane. Um, I, know, I know you've mentioned that you uh, are careful about the seat that you uh, so oh, then, yes. Yeah, yeah. I try to pick the, the safest, the safest seat, seat, which is over the wing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we, so there's so many things you can do to be healthy when traveling. So we are uh, out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Runa Rosa about healthy holiday airline travel. And thank you for joining us today. And I wish you a very safe and healthy holiday season. Enjoy your travels. Uh, and thanks to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. Please join us for future ThinkTech productions.